We all have that one friend who just doesn't like hiking and chances are that they don't like it because they made one of these five beginner hiking mistakes on one of their first backpacking trips. You probably already know that to avoid blisters you should break in your hiking boots, wear merino wool socks and tape your feet as soon as you start to feel any hot spots. But even though you follow all of this advice, you still get blisters. So why is that? I found from my own personal experience three other factors that are equally important, which are getting good quality merino wool socks, getting shoes that fit you perfectly, and also lacing your shoes properly. I've tried a lot of different merino wool hiking socks, cheap ones and expensive ones, and I still haven't found a single pair of cheap merino wool socks that don't cause blisters. The only ones that have worked for me are the ones made by Darn Tough, Smart Wool or Silverlight. So I would recommend even for beginners to invest in a pair of good quality merino wool socks because you'll be saying goodbye to blisters. Another equally important thing is finding hiking footwear that fits your feet perfectly. When you first put them on, you shouldn't feel like you need to break them in. This is much more important than actually breaking in your hiking shoes because you'll pretty much be facing an uphill battle if they don't fit you from the start. The toe box should be wide and your toes shouldn't dig into it. The heel area should be nicely padded all around so that you don't get any bruises and it shouldn't be moving up and down when you walk. And the last reason why you still might be getting blisters is because you're lacing your shoes the normal way like this. Instead, you should be lacing them like this. Lacing them using this technique gives much more room in the toe area, which reduces the blister formation over here around your toes, while still keeping the heel area nice and tight. Start by untying your laces all the way, except for the last loop. Then skip the next loop, and on the third one, do a surgeon's knot, which is essentially a regular knot that you would use to tie your shoes, and do one additional turn like this. This will essentially keep this area nice and loose while keeping the rest of the shoe tight. Continue tying the rest of the shoe normally. And finally, in the last one, do another surgeon's knot before finally tightening the shoe. Doing another surgeon's knot in the end helps with keeping the heel area nice and tight. When hiking in autumn, winter or spring, layering is super difficult to get right. Wear too much and you'll start sweating, losing energy and getting tired. Wear too little and you'll just get cold and have a miserable experience. So here's how you do it right. Essentially, you need to be layering in three layers. The base layer, the mid layer, and the outer shell. The base layer is there to wick all the sweat away from your body and move it towards the outer layers, which will keep you dry and warm. If you have the budget, you can get a merino wool base layer, but it honestly isn't a must because you can also do with synthetic polypropylene base layers, which work very similarly, except they start to sweat and smell bad much quicker. The mid layer is there to keep you warm, and this is usually achieved with dawn jackets or with Fleeces. If you're on a budget, then you can definitely get a synthetic fleece, which will keep you almost as warm as a dawn jacket. The outer shell is there to protect you from wind and rain, and this is usually done with rain jackets and rain pants. Another really important thing to nail just right is when to wear each of the layers. And a good phrase to remember here is be bold, start cold. The main idea here is that you should feel a bit cold when you're just starting hiking, because as you work up your sweat, you will become much warmer. And this will keep you from sweating and becoming cold later on. When hiking, always wear the base layer, but remove the mid layer or the outer shell, depending on how cold it is. And when you stop, instantly put on all of the remaining layers back on to keep your warmth. On different sleeping bags, you'll usually find two or three temperatures written on them, which is comfort, risk, and survival. You need to look at the highest of these three numbers to find out what temperatures the sleeping bag is actually good to use for. So for example, on this sleeping bag, there are zero and minus five degrees Celsius written on it. 
and I would pretty much never use it below zero degrees Celsius because I know that it would be pretty cold sleeping in this sleeping bag. Now, if your sleeping bag is slightly too cold to be sleeping in the temperature that you want to be sleeping in, you don't need to buy a new and expensive sleeping bag. What you can do is invest in a sleeping bag liner which goes inside the sleeping bag and it adds a few temperatures to it so that you can sleep in colder temperatures. Another really budget option is to combine two colder sleeping bags, putting one inside the other. I did this for a very long Long time when I was hiking in winters because I didn't have the money to buy an expensive and warm sleeping bag. Another really important thing for camping in winter is getting a sleeping pad that's warm enough. Otherwise there won't be enough insulation from the cold ground. The problem with this is that warm inflatable sleeping pads usually cost a lot. So if you're on a budget what you can do is bring another foam mat and put it underneath the inflatable sleeping pad. Just remember to put the reflective side facing towards you to keep your body heat from escaping and reflecting it back to you. Another thing that you can do if you're on a very strict budget is to use an emergency blanket. Just put it underneath the inflatable sleeping pad and it will reflect the warmth from your body back to you which will increase your temperature during the night. And the good thing about these is that they're very small, lightweight and they cost pretty much nothing. Also remember that your sleeping bag works kind of like a thermos. If you put something cold in it you'll warm up very slowly. So if you're really cold, do some push-ups, stand-ups and run around the tent just before going to sleep because you'll warm up much quicker. Another thing that a lot of people do in very cold nights is bring one or two Nalgene bottles. Essentially you boil some water, put it inside the bottle, then put the bottle inside the sleeping bag and this will make you become warmer much quicker. One of the first things that a lot of beginners spend their money on is a pair of good hiking boots. But for summer hiking, I would ideally recommend you to get hiking shoes or trail running shoes. And the reasoning is simple, they're much lighter. Placing extra weight on your feet is bad because this means that you will need to carry it with every step that you take. It will wear you down much faster, which means that in the end you won't enjoy your hike as much. But of course there is one very big issue with this. You're much more likely to sprain your ankle. But sprained ankles usually happen because your feet aren't used to the movement that happens when for example you slip on a rock. So what you need to do is stretch out your ankles at least a few weeks before starting your hike. This will highly reduce the chances of you spraining your ankle. I would say that carrying too much weight in your backpack is probably the number one reason why many people have so bad experiences out on the trail because it causes a lot of shoulder pain, foot pain and in general a quicker loss of your energy. So here are some realistic tips on how to quickly and cheaply reduce your pack weight. Instead of protecting your backpack from the outside with a rain cover, use a regular trash bag to protect all of your most important items from becoming wet. It's much lighter and it's also 100% waterproof. If you'll be building a fire, realistically you don't really need to bring a saw or an axe. You could just break the smaller branches with your hands or burn larger logs in the middle in the fire itself. You also don't need to bring a large knife with you. A small pocket knife is good enough for most situations. Bringing and drinking enough water is really important to have a good experience and not have any headaches. But if you'll be bringing too much, you'll be carrying a lot of needless weight. So what you should do instead is start filtering water. The cheapest and most lightweight option is to use water purification tablets. Just pop them in the bottle and the water will be good for drinking after 30 minutes. But another option that I personally prefer even better is to use water filters. They don't weigh a lot, they give instant results and they're also really affordable. Before setting off, lay out all of your gear on the ground and divide it into two groups. The first group should be everything that is absolutely necessary and the second one that is beneficial to have but not necessary. Take a good look at the second group and decide which items you can live without. Some examples from this group could be larger books, espresso makers, camp shoes, Bluetooth speakers and other similar items. One other group of items that adds a lot of weight is food and drinks. If you'll be bringing beer, don't choose one that's in a glass bottle and instead use tin cans because it's much lighter. And in fact if you're planning on bringing anything in glass bottles it's a very smart idea 
to refill it into plastic bottles instead because they weigh much less. If you're planning on bringing pasta, couscous, or anything else that's in a larger pack, you can repackage it into Ziploc bags because they're lighter and you don't need to bring the full bag. You should also avoid bringing canned goods if possible because they do contain a lot of needless water inside of them. Some calorie dense foods that you could bring on your hike that don't weigh a lot could be pasta, couscous, oatmeal, rice, nuts, dried fruit, or peanut butter. If you did any other mistakes as a beginner, please write them down in the video comments because it might help other people who are just starting out. And if you want to support this channel, also check out my website trailgoals.com. Together with my wife, we make posters of various through hiking trails from North America, Europe, and other parts of the world. Some of them include the Rim to Rim, the PCT, the Camino de Santiago, and over a hundred other different hiking trails from all across the world. If you finished a through hike that you're proud of or you know a friend who wants to do a through hike then this poster will be a great gift to keep your eyes on the goal. Use the code OSCARHIKES to get 10% off and when buying two or more posters you'll also get free shipping. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!